Lair of the Mounties. We present episode 34 in Lair of the Mounties. Into the peaceful, law-abiding atmosphere of England, there comes suddenly the startling news of a gold robbery in the English Channel, a story of unbelievable piracy in the 20th century. A cross-channel boat, the Ibex, has been stopped in mid-channel shortly after midnight. Armed men hold up the officers and crew. Two million dollars in gold bullion is taken from the ship's strong room, and the pirates disappear into the night without a trace. All England is ablaze with the incredible news. Miss Guest. Yes, wait a minute. I wish you'd shut that door. All right. You get that paper? What is this robbery? Just a minute. Oh, here it is. Good gracious, listen. What is it? Daring robbery on high seas. Ships seized by armed bandits. Half million sterling in bar gold in transit from London to Bank of France. Stolen from ship's strong room. Oh, how dreadful. Here, give me that paper. Well, the thing's impossible. Hmm. Officers and crew held up by armed bandits. Ship's purser forced to open strong room. Gold removed in ship's boats. Well, what do you know about that? As you say, the thing is impossible. I don't know. A robbery like that isn't impossible, of course. According to the report, there were over 20 men in the gang. Must have been carefully planned. After getting away with it, that's something else. But who would want to steal all that gold? And where could they hide it? How could they dispose of it? Now, that's a very sensible question, Miss Guest. It's what puzzles me. If the report is true, and it must be, what organization in the world could be big enough to handle such a job short of a nation? A nation? What do you mean? I don't know. I'm just wondering. Hello? Yes? One moment, please. It's for you, Inspector. Yeah. Hello? Oh, yes. Speaking. Yes? Yes. I'll be there in ten minutes. Room 48. All right. Room 48, eh? We must be getting important. I don't know. Naval Intelligence, number five, Commander Reed. Better stall off any, any appointments, Miss Guest. Looks like a job. Yes. All right. Hold everything to the present. I'll telephone if I have to go out of town. All right. Hello, Blair. Thanks for being so prompt. Sit down. You've heard this news, of course. You mean the gold robbery? Yes. Only the newspaper report. I see. There's a good deal more to it than that. The biggest thing we've had since the war. How did they manage to stop that ship? That's the most astounding thing of all. The ship's engines failed suddenly. She's a motor ship. The ignition went off. Lights went out. The ship was helpless. You mean before the robbery? Yes. Something stopped her. Why, I never heard of such a thing. The funny thing is that it happened once before. What? Yes, four months ago. Happened to the cruiser Thetis in the Mediterranean, just east of Malta. She stopped suddenly the same way. Nothing happened. The power came on again, and she proceeded on her course. But it was never accounted for. That's extraordinary. Yes. Now, the details of this Ibex affair. Just a minute. What is my standing in this affair? Orders are to employ you as before. Special investigation work. That's satisfactory? Mm, certainly. Good. The Abex is a small cross-channel boat. Passengers and mail. Left Southampton at midnight. At about 12.50, as I said, <laughs> the engines failed mysteriously. The passengers were all asleep below. The watchman on deck noticed a small group of men near the bridge steps. Before he could give the alarm, he was knocked out. Then the gang was already aboard ship? Part of them, apparently. Went aboard as ordinary passengers. But two of the engine room crew were in it. All right, carry on. There was a whistle signal from near the bridge. Men all over the ship moved simultaneously. They killed the officer on the bridge and seized the quartermaster at the wheel. The officers and crew were locked in their rooms, and all exits from below were blocked within a couple of minutes. Mm. And a carefully planned job. How'd they get the gold? There were two tre treasury guards on duty. They were overpowered. The bandits lowered three of the ship's boats and opened the iron doors on the lower deck. Inside ten minutes, the gold is in the boats. At thirteen minutes after one, the officers broke out of their quarters and found the boats gone and the ship drifting. What an astounding thing. Are you quite sure of this mysterious stopping of the ship? Well, yes. 
That's the queerest thing of all. Our people are working on it. It was some sort of influence that came from a point directly ahead of the ibex. How do you know that? Because the freighter Lucerne was three miles directly astern on the same course. She felt it slightly. Another ship running parallel with the ibex noticed nothing. What do you want me to do? Tell me something. What do you know about a place known as Greystone Manor in Devonshire? Greystone Manor? Why? Well, I'm asking you. Oh, I know it slightly. Private estate near Coombe Seaton in Devonshire. It's all right, Blair. Don't hesitate to talk of it. Lord Waverton told me all about the job you did for him down there. Indeed? But what has Greystone Manor to do with this affair? It might have a good deal to do with it. As I said, I know about that affair of Greystone Hall and about Schwartz, the man they deported. Well? The interesting thing is, that the new owner of Greyston Hall is another rather mysterious character. His name is Paul Kasser. Ever hear of him? Yes, of course. Big financier, isn't he? That's the man. He moved into Greystone Hall soon after Schwartz left the country. What nationality is Kasser? He's a citizen of Mauritania. Ever hear of it? Mauritania? Yes, once or twice. In the Balkans somewhere, isn't it? That's near enough. Anyway, it's a little nation, very progressive has a fascist government that is very active in Central Europe. They have a good army and a magnificent air force. Kassa is the financial power behind the throne. And so? I still don't see any connection. Right. Here we go. We've been picking up a lot of short-wave messages in figure cipher lately. Here's one of them. Hmm. Where do they come from? Three places. There are three different stations sending this cipher. The Mauritanian Embassy in London a private station we located at Greystone Hall. Then, last night, before and after the robbery, we were picking up messages from a ship somewhere in the channel, all in this cipher, or one similar. But still, it might have nothing at all to do with the robbery. Do you understand our method of locating a sending station? No, not very well. I know that you can get the exact direction or bearing of a sending station. We can do a lot better than that. It's perfectly simple. We have plenty of naval wireless stations all along the south coast. We were working on these cipher messages before this Ibex robbery happened. And what did you get? We had all our stations plot the bearing of this ship that was sending. The directions all intersect in and around the area where the Ibex was stopped. You mean the night of the robbery there was a ship sending these messages from positions near the vessel that was stopped? Right. And why couldn't you find her? Oh, come now. We did the best we could. We had five destroyers out within an hour of the report of the robbery. They all picked up the wireless signals and headed for the location. But the signals stopped... And they didn't find any ship. What do you think it was? A submarine? It could be, of course. Now for the last point. After that robbery occurred, as I said, we got messages coming from a ship in the channel. We plotted her position on the map. She was uh, steering a course for the Devonshire coast. And Coombe Seaton's in Devonshire. That's right. The chief would like you to get down there and see if you can find anything. You have full authority. <laughs> Sounds like a wild errand. Can I have a copy of those cipher messages? Certainly, you can have them all. But it's not very much use. We have some pretty good cipher experts. They say it's an outlaw cipher, sort of arbitrary code. Still, I might stumble onto it. Yes. Well, good luck, Blair. Where is your address at Coombe Seaton? Yes, you can get me care of Dr. Craig Holland, Astley Cottage. He's a friend of mine. I'll be there this evening. Right. Goodbye, old chap. And uh, keep your head down. I know. Goodbye, Reed. Hello, McLean. Glad to see you. Hello, sir. The doctor said to make yourself at home. Supper will be ready in half an hour. Good. That gives us time to talk things over. Huh, McLean? What do you think of it? Search me, Inspector. There's been so much happening, I haven't got my bearings yet. What do you think of this idea about Grayson Manor? That's what I'm wondering, sir. Funny that place should come under suspicion again. Yes. Did you look around there? Aye, I was there this afternoon. Did you see the owner, this Mr. Cassar? Aye, he was there. Showed me over the place. A very friendly old gentleman. You found nothing suspicious? I did not. You see, I've nothing definite to go on. Well, McLean, we've got to try and find something. This is the biggest thing since the war. The intelligence people believe that Grayson Hall is the place from which this robbery was directed. I may be, but there's nothing to show it. Did you inquire about those cipher messages? I talked to Mr. Kasser about them. He didn't conceal anything. He says they're messages in financial code. It might be too. I've gone over everything with the naval people. They've got men out along the coast hunting for likely places. I don't see what chance we have down here. They couldn't conceal a force of men at Grayson Hall without... Well, without showing some activity. Uh, but there's one thing that looks very suspicious. What's that? You mind when Schwartz, the former owner of the hall, was put out the country? Yes. Funny he turned over everything to this new man, Kassar. Yes, but Schwartz had to get out in a hurry. He hadn't much choice. Still, I'm thinking they're both in the same gang. That's a guess, McLean. Not altogether, sir. 
watch through use that same cipher for messages. Then, uh, what? How do you know that? I took one off him when we arrested him that time. Good Lord, you keep it? Certainly. Have it here. Just a mass of figures like the others. No rhyme or reason to it. Hold on. What's this in pencil at the beginning of the message? Mm, just a couple of letters. Looks like O.T. Hmm. Swartz must have made that notation himself. Doesn't help any. No, I was wondering if it might be a guide to decoding the message. O.T. Does it suggest anything? Not a thing, unless... <laughs> unless Old Testament. <laughs> how does other things Swartz would deal in? Well, how about in supper, Inspector? It's getting late. All right. Hello? Who? Oh, yes, sir. Hold the line, sir. Inspector Blair. Yeah. Hello? Oh, yes, Reed. What's wrong? Hey? What? Another robbery? Where? Rates cut. How much? What's that? Grayson Hall? Oh, yes, if you think it's any use. No, nothing yet. All right. What now, sir? Another gold robbery. Liner Altonia stopped off the coast of Ireland. A million sterling this time. Taken in just the same way. Good lush. What is this, anyway? I don't know. They're working fast. McLean. Yes, sir. Commander Reed wants us to watch Grayson Manor. It's funny. I stick to the idea that this thing's being directed from there. We'll get a bite to eat and then get down there. Very good, sir. Well, come on. Let's get some supper. Uh, just a minute, Inspector. What? Keep still. Why? What's wrong? There's something moving out there in the shrubbery. See it? Look. Through the big windy. Yes. Good Lord. What is it? It can't be a man. Look out! The second part of the Ibex mystery will be heard in episode 35 of Blair of the Mounties.